My name is Christian Stern. I work at Westwood High School here in Austin, Texas. Um, a little bit of background about myself. I was a kicker for four years at UTSA here in, uh, in San Antonio, Texas. I did kicking and punting while I was there. I earned all conference awards my junior and senior year, all conference USA honorable mention. Um, and before I was at Westwood High School, I did three years of volunteering, one at Antonian Preparatory in San Antonio. I did student teaching at Churchill High School, also in San Antonio, as well as helping out uh, with the staff at UTSA when Coach Frank Wilson was there. Um, I learned a whole lot and I was very happy for my time there. Um, so what I'm going to talk about today is rugby punt technique and fundamentals. This is something that a lot of teams have to resort to just because they have a traditional straight ahead punter, some guy that can just get a perfect spiral and get the hang time. That's why most guys go to a rugby punt. Ourselves this year here at Westwood, we had to go over um, and use a rugby punt just because we don't have a traditional punter that can get the hang time. We also don't have the fastest athletes in the world. And I'm going to go over how a rugby punt can help you out and your team. So just some things I'm going to go over. I'm going to go in season, out of season practice plan, something that you can work on with your punter, things that you can give him. The rugby punt in general, pros and cons. And then I'm going to go over the technique after that. So right here, when the practice plan for in season, I know most guys, when you send your punter out, he doesn't really have anything to work on. Not, not that you give him. So whenever he does go to practice, especially on his own, give him something that he can work on while he's over there on the practice field. And uh, better athletes that you have, that is a punter, have five minutes a day that your whole team kicks. I highly recommend this. I've talked to a lot of high schools in the area as well as ourselves. We have five minutes of uh, a day that we just practice punting, kicking, catching, holding, snapping, the whole nine yards, just the basic operations of punting. We practice that at least five minutes a day. That's helped us go very smoothly in our games, and I highly recommend it for anybody. So whenever you go out to practice, there needs to be something specific in mind that you're going to work on. You can't just go out there and just tell them to kick just to kick. Everything's got to have a target when he kicks. Um, you've got to have a distance in mind or trajectory that you want that kick to go off of. Um, very, very detailed, very specific. I always tell my kickers, hey, you're aiming for that tree right there, that stop sign, that play clock, that dummy right there in the corner of the end zone. So reps during the week, whenever they're out there, I, I recommend about 30 punts a day, Monday, Tuesday. And I've got a practice plan for this, um, and I'm going to go over that after this slide. And 10 of those need to be pooch punts because that short game is real important. Because if you can pin that thing inside the 20, inside the 15, inside the 10, the coordinator is going to be real happy with you after that. On Wednesday, you can see that I tone it down a little bit. It goes from 30 punts to 20 punts right after that. I recommend tapering off because punting is a very violent motion. It's all on one leg, and if you do it too much, it can wear a guy out and potentially um, cause an injury. I've had to deal with this, especially last season. Um, our kicker had a groin injury the whole season. Our punter, thankfully, I was able to tone him down quite a bit, and he plays every position on our field for us. Uh, I told him to just take it easy some days. There were some days he came to practice on a Wednesday. We had him do practice kicks, and I didn't tell him to do anything else after that. Thursday, on Thursdays, um, we have this thing called kick the field that you can see right here on my slide. What we do down here in Texas is we do every special team scenario and we just walk through it and just review it on Thursdays as well as our walkthrough. Um, and when your kicker is out there, he should only kick those practice reps. That's it. And there's even sometimes I recommend that he doesn't even do those reps. And then on game day, that's just your typical warm up, typical walkthrough. Um, typical game day reps. He's not going to do anything else besides that because he needs to be fresh and ready to go for game day. Saturday, ice baths, highly recommended. I mean, for all athletes should be taking it. And definitely every day through the week, that's a lot of stress on your quad muscle. And it's a lot of tension that your leg is going to go through. So you need to make sure and take care of that. And then in season, left and right punts absolutely have to practice them because uh, if you just roll out to the right every time, teams are going to notice that and going to go, hey, we're just going to rush them. They don't have another punt. They don't have a punt to the left, not that they've shown us. So you have to have something to counter that. 
Okay, so I know this is kind of small here on my screen. I'm gonna share my email at the end of this video. And if any of you want this information, please feel free to contact me. I will gladly send this practice plan to y'all. And here's a rundown through it right here at the top. This has the breakdown of the season and it has how many reps Monday and Tuesday you wanna go through as well as Wednesday, how you're gonna taper off. Thursday is the off day. I had my best games in college whenever I took a full day, even two full days off before a game. I was fresh and ready to go on Friday. And then right down here, just gives you a little information about ice baths and if you go to the playoffs and what have you. Right down here underneath that is the warm-ups, high knees, butt kicks, karaoke. If anybody's going through just a regular football practice, you know how to do a warm-up. And then right down underneath here is the stretches that you're going to be doing. Those stretches are um, I do every single one that I did. And when you do warm-ups and stretches, that should take no longer, or excuse me, no shorter than 30 minutes. The stretching should be one of the longest parts of your practice to warm your legs up. And then right down here at the bottom are just so many warm-up drills you're going to have when you go through punt practice. Uh, one of them is catching sets, the very top one. And here's all it is. Whenever you're back there, and again, this goes to that five minutes of practice, you're going to work on literally catching it, setting it with the laces out, and I'm going to go over that and setting it right here off of your hip, if you can see that right down low. And again, catching sets. When I was in college, I couldn't kick all day. So one thing that I did do is I caught the ball about a, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times just in one practice. I had the, one of the deep snappers just toss it to me, and I will just catch set, catch set. I was a traditional punter, so that's why I hold it out in front of me. But for rugby, it's going to be right off the hip level. Over here off to the right, this is just explaining your practice and how you're going to go through it. Just some advice on how you should do it. And then right over here on the left side, this is a full-on rugby punt. You've got it rolling to the right from the left hash and kicking it down the field. Again, give your guy a target. Give him something to kick to. We want the ball here at Westwood over here on the numbers as close to the sideline as possible. Our special teams coordinator, our defensive coordinator will even tell you that sideline is the best defender on the field. He is undefeated. And then the other thing, if you have a left punt, rugby left punt, which I highly recommend, Again, practice it from the left hash, just punting it to the sideline away from the returner. Now, again, on the left football field, that's from the left hash. You need to work middle and right. And when you go to the right hash, it's going to change up a little bit. And I'm going to go over that when we go into technique. And on the right football field right here, that is where you're going to work your pooch punts. That's a different punt. Again, I'm going to go over that. Everything's pretty much the same. There's just one little minor detail that you're going to change to it whenever you punt. Okay, and then practice plans out of season. Whenever you send your kicker off, he needs to have something specific to work on. You need to tell him, hey, your rugby lefts weren't that great. Um, I'd like just a little bit more height on it, more distance. This is how far they should be going. Um, this is where I want the ball located. Whatever it may be, you need to give him something specific to work on. Otherwise, they're just going out in the world, not knowing really where to go. They're going to practice three to four days a week. That's on the practice to pull up, a rest each day. Again, kicking is a very violent motion. It's a lot of tension on your quads, hamstrings, groin muscle. After the season is over, they need two full weeks off of absolutely nothing. No lifting, no kicking, none of that stuff. And then after the off season over, same thing, two full weeks off. Some guys will take less. Um, I've been a victim of getting hurt because of practicing too much. So I recommend actually getting some rest time in. Now, when you take those two weeks off after the off season, you'll have a full week before two a day starts that you need to practice before uh, the season gets going. So the, on those two weeks you take off after the off season, make sure that you do it in a time frame where you have a week before two a day starts so you're not rusty coming into the season. Okay, and then here's my out is very similar to the end season one. Really the only thing is, is right down here is the schedule. You're practicing three to four times a week. The reason why you can practice 30 reps a day every day when you practice is because you have an off window. You have a day off in between each day. That gives you a full day of rest. Now, when you notice on the schedule, it says that you practice on Sundays right here for like week two. So on Sundays, it's going to be a lighter practice because it is back-to-back -back days that you will be practicing. Again, right here, 
setup is still the same with your catch and sets, your full kicks, your one steps, your pooch kicks, and then you still have your stretching and your warm up up top. Okay, the pros and cons of rugby punts. One of the pros is that it's good for non-athletic teams like here at Westwood. And then it's good for teams with no traditional punter. It is very, very, very hard to find a punter that is good at just straight ahead punting that can get a, a good spiral and get hang time and get distance. Or even not so much getting a spiral, but just kicking it high and kicking it straight ahead with and being consistent with it. Rugby punts are not that hard of a kick to do. It's more of a natural leg swing motion. And it's something that kids have really been doing since if they've been playing soccer. There's an automatic fake that can be built into your punt team. And you'll see it on film. Teams will roll out. And while they're rolling out, he'll be reading the line of scrimmage. And some teams, if you got a good enough athlete back there, which most schools do, you'll notice, oh, shoot, there's this big hole right here. I can just take off and go get a first down. And then turnovers. Did that come when we didn't get the ball back? But when you kick that ball, it's a line drive kick, and there's a lot of bodies right there. And that, that return team is not looking at you at that point, and that low uh, low flying kick could actually hit somebody in the back and cause a turnover. Cons of it, there's not much hang time, and you're kind of limited to what you can do. And that second bullet point right there, right hash for right-footed punter. Everything I talk about here is on a right-footed punter, so if you have any questions about a left-footed guy, just take what I say and flip it. So for the right-footed guy, if I'm on the right hash, I'm right here and the sidelines right here. It's more of a one, two, three, get that thing off. You can't really read the line. You can't waste time on it. That's pretty much when a rugby left kick would come into play unless they're just not threatening to return on you. And then, like I said, it's a low trajectory kick. Um, things that scare me is that they might hit it too high and hit it to somebody right in front of them and the ball only goes 10 yards. But that's something you really got to live with if you don't have a guy that can get the hang time and kick it straight ahead. Okay, rugby stance, ball placement. I want my guy square to the snapper, and I want his feet slightly inside shoulder width. This is a comfortable stance for him to stand in, and I want him to hold the top half of the football the way I explain to my guys, like holding the top of a Coke bottle. I don't know why that sticks with them. They just do. And that's what my hand placement would look like. My thumb right here and my index finger are right here on this top white stripe, okay? And then again, I'm just holding the top half of the football. I'm going to get more in hand placement here on the next couple of slides. So rugby punt approach. A right punt, right rugby punt, excuse me, is on the left hash, middle of the field, okay? That's when you can roll out and take your time and actually look. And when you roll out, you are buying time for your gunners to get straight down the field. Now, if you're on the right hash, like I said, that's more of a kick when you're going one, two, three, and just getting off because you don't have time because the sideline is right there. Now, you need to be aware of some guys bringing some kind of funky corner blitz from where you're rolling out to, but that's a different topic. And then a left punt, that is the same as when you're rolling out to the right. Whenever you're doing a rugby left, it's just catch it, one, two, get it off. And then you're going to have a slight lean with a big chest. So the way I describe that to people is kind of like you're getting ready to squat. I have a slight lean with a big chest right here. I don't want to be leaning forward. That's going to take all my momentum out of my kick. And then the finish, the ball will be off at hip level, eyes on the ball the whole time. I mean, that's the biggest thing is just eye contact with where you're going to kick it. And then when you actually kick the ball, we're going to see it here on film, you're going to be making contact with the ball at knee height. Guys in the NFL who are six foot five still drop at hip level and make contact at knee height, and they're giants. Laces out to the target, just so that way you have something to aim. I've seen that that's helped most punters whenever they roll out or kick in general. Toe needs to be locked, and I'm going to go over that on film, why your toe needs to be locked out. And then when you kick, when you kick through the ball, you need to actually come up with your right leg and land on your right foot when you kick imagine that there's a hurdle that you're just trying to kick up over and through that thing it's the same thing as a kickoff all right so right here on this first film the reason why i wanted to go over this one is to show you that what a possible turnover can look like unfortunately we didn't get on this one but this is one of the benefits to a rugby punt so right here we're in our normal formation we're going to do a rugby right punt so right here catches it 
slow rollout. He's examining the line, rolling, rolling, rolling. And then right here, boom, he immediately puts the ball hip level, ready to go kick it. I think that's perfect. He's got the laces out and everything. And then bam, whenever he kicks it, it's hard to see right here. It's right here at knee height. That's excellent. That's where all the power is on your kick is right there at the knee level. Now, when he kicks it out, you'll notice right here, one of the guys blocking our returner, he's not even looking at the football right now. Hits right off the back of his legs. You even see him, the returner and him are both panicking at that point because that's a possible turnover that can happen. That's one of the pros to a rugby punt. You kick it out, their guys can't see it, and it's got too, uh, too little of time to, for the returner to relay to his guys, hey, you're about to get hit in the back or yell, Peter, 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 or whatever your, um, whatever your word is to get away from the football. And then right here, this is the same film. I just wanted to get a bird's eye view of it. Again, rolling out, examining the line, buying his gunner's time to get down the field, and then bam, right here. All is at hip level, perfect. And actually, he gets contact with it lower than knee height. I don't have a problem with that. I'd want it just a little bit higher, but if he gets a good kick, I'm not arguing with it. And here's one thing I want you to notice. This is a big thing about pointing the toe, and I'm gonna go over this in a couple of punts later on. That ball is sideways. If it hits the ground, it's not rolling anywhere. And the big thing with rugby punts is getting those yards after contact with the ground. Boom, hits right off there, guy. They both panic. Now, if we would have had guys hustling the ball, that would have been a turnover for us. All right, so right here on this next punt, this is an example of why it's important to point your toe. And I'm going to show you a good one and a bad one. So this is the bad one. So right here, good, he gets the ball, he's rolling out examining. Now what y'all didn't see right here, one of their defenders fizzled out over and their corner that they had right here is actually blitzing off the edge. So our punter, thank God, he recognized this and he's getting it off quicker. Now what screwed it up is that you can see it right here. He did not point his toe fully and he did not get a good rotation. Here's the angle of his foot. It's kind of making an L shape or an obtuse angle. When he points his toe, it should be straight and you should be able to lay a two by four right on top of his shin and his toe and you should see no space in between. That's a perfect toe point. So here's what I want you to notice. That ball lands about the 42, 43 yard line and it rolls to the opposite 49 yard line. That's seven, eight yards that it rolled. That's not very much. We want the ball to go, obviously, as far as it possibly can. When you get that perfect end over end rotation, just kind of like this perfect end over end rotation, that ball is going to roll and roll and roll. Especially since it's a low trajectory kick, it's going to hit the ground and just take off. And then here's the back view of it. I'm going to show you from our uh, from a better angle. Okay, rolling out again, good, perfect, love it. Ball's off hip, and that's excellent. And then it just comes out all cattywampus again. You can see it barely on film, the ball's sideways. And then whenever it hits, it just dies. It doesn't keep going. Now, your question might be, why did it die? What caused him to not point his toe? What caused him to not get that rotation? What a lot of kids do, and they're just high school kids, They'll be looking at the ball and then they look up just a split second too early. They have to watch their foot hit the ball, not look at their foot hit the ball. The difference between the two is you're actually focusing when you're watching. I need to see my foot hit the ball, make contact and kick through that thing to lock my toe out to get that rotation to get a good roll on it. Okay, so here's the other thing I went over. You need to have a left punt with your rugby right because if all you do is roll out right, especially over here on the right sideline where there's no room, these dudes are going to come hot right now. And the thing that's going to hurt, uh, especially on a rugby punt, is that you have to rush it. And a lot of the hang time, the hang time that you get is the rolling out and letting your gunners get down. So especially on the right hash, you don't have time to roll out. And especially, this is Round Rock High School right here. They had a dude back there at returner. And you can't see it, but he's actually cheating outside of the hash. So what we decided to do is be like, okay, we'll just kick it the other way then. 
and there's all this green grass so over here that we can kick it to so right here made the call at this point and on the difference on a rugby left punt it's just left foot right foot get it off or right left get it off three step two step doesn't matter what he is you're just getting it and ripping it and again the same thing he's going to put the ball down at hip height make contact at knee height now on this one he does a much better job it's a little blurry right here I mean, his foot if i were to lay a two by four down on his leg it would be straight and the other thing that i really like about this is that his leg is parallel to the ground he gets up and through that thing perfect and unlike the last one this hits on the 30 and rolls all the way down to about the 15 yard line so instead of rolling eight he gets that perfect roll and it rolls 15 yards that's almost a whole nother first down compared to the last punt. Okay. And then right here, this was his best punt of the season. Just like the last one, this is another one showing you that if you point your toe and get that perfect lock, it's going to get that perfect rotation down the field. And this was awesome. When he ever, he got this punt rolling out, buying time for his gunners to get down the field, balls up hip height. And whenever you drop it, that ball needs to have a little bit of tilt to it, just a little bit. So whenever you hit it, it gets a forward rotation on it. And that forward rotation is what's going to carry the ball down the field. Bam gets through it. Perfect leg lock. He lands on his kicking leg. And what that tells me is that he really got through that thing. So just going back through it slowly one more time. Bam, contact in the height right here. This is picture perfect. Right here, just look at the leg swing. He's got his toe pointed straight out. Leg is parallel to the ground. Gets up and through it, lands on his kicking leg. It couldn't have been any better than that. Here's what I want you to notice. The ball lands on the 40-yard line. That ball rolls past the 30, past the 20, all the way down to the 16-yard line. That ball rolled 24 extra yards because he got the right spin on it. And I can't, I can't preach that enough, how important it is to get a good rotation. And then here's the back end zone view of it. I just like getting a close up of what he's doing. Catch, again, set. Now it's the middle of the field, so he doesn't have as much time as he would on the left. Cash, surveying, boom. You can see right here in the bottom corner, balls at hip height, slightly below. This guy was very coachable. I was very lucky to have him he did everything that I coached him. As soon as he makes contact, knee height, again, perfect. Explodes through it. Now, my only problem on this one is he kicked it a little bit too high on the ball. Whenever you make contact with the ball, you want to make it about an inch, two inches below the middle part of the ball where all the meat is. When you hit it right here, that's going to get it that 45 degree angle trajectory to get it down the field. And my problem on this, he hit it just a little bit too low, which gave it just enough height that fortunately enough for us, he wasn't up a yard or two because if he would have caught it closer, he would have had 10, 15 yards between him and the next closest defender. Luckily for us, great hit, great. You can see it rolling down the field end over end. It slowly dies. That thing just rolls and rolls and rolls. Okay, now on pooch punts, it's the same thing as a regular rugby punt except one difference. You're going to hold it top of the football right here off your hip whenever you drop it it's going to be back slight at an angle i was telling 45 degree diagonal angle they'll adjust to it on their own and then you're going to make contact with it an inch two inches this one is more two inches on a rugby punt reason being is because you want to get height on it you want that thing to pop up and just die whenever it hits so you want more hang time on this one they're going to kick it about 30 yards so here's, uh, I believe this was the only rug, uh, only pooch punt we had on the season. And uh, this is another big coaching point for your rugby punters. Tell them to be smart about where they're on the field. They're on the plus 46 right now. And you've got to know, you got to know with your punter, what's his average kicking it in the air if it's 30, 35. So you can tell him, hey, this is pooch punch range, pooch punt range, excuse me. So when he goes out there, he doesn't forget because I remember being a 16, 17 year old kid in high school. I would remember these things because I was just worried about just kicking it at that point. So getting to the film again, left middle of the field. He knows he's got time rolling out. 
Again, boom, right there off the hip. We practiced that so much. We didn't practice so much the kicking as just the catching and setting it part. Because if you don't do that right, I don't care how hard you kick it. It's not going to work after that. Again, makes contact knee height. Now, props that you'll see on film, it actually falls back on him. I don't have a problem with it because that's just how he kicks it. And he gets a whole lot of hang time on this. He's bought enough time rolling out that I've got one, two, and this guy's a little bit away, but I've got three defenders in frame ready to make a play with nobody blocking in front of him. And then again, just from the end zone view, just looking at it, just so I can see how he's holding it. Perfect. Actually watched himself catch the ball before he ran. You don't want to take off too early because I've seen guys drop it, and that's bad news bears right there. So when he rolls out, ball drops at hip height, one thing I like that he does is that he actually opens up too, but we won't get into all that. Bam gets up and through that thing, lands on his kicking leg, going through it one more time. Rolls out hip height, contact at knee height, explodes up and through that leg, that kicking leg, and then lands on his kicking foot. That lets me know he got straight up through that thing and exploded. Fair cop, take that thing all day right there. So whenever you have a rugby punter, these are just a couple other things I wanted to hit off of. Needs to be calm, patient, and smart. Needs to be a guy that you can put back there that's going to be patient like our guy is, luckily enough for us, that's smart and knows I've got to buy time. He doesn't just freak out as soon as the ball is snapped to him and think he has to just get it off right now. He has to know, hey, they might possibly be, be bringing a guy from the corner over there. He's got to be able to trust his blockers, not somebody that's going to panic. And – he doesn't have to be an athlete, but typically the guys you find that are going to be your rugby punter are your athletes, and it's good especially for fakes because you have the built-in of rolling out. Oh, heck, they all have their backs turned to me. I'm just going to take off and go get a first down. Got to be coachable. The guy that we had here at Westwood, anything I told him to do, fixed it immediately, didn't argue with me, didn't question it. And then here's my contact info. That is my personal cell phone number. If you'd like to get into contact with me and talk anything about kicking, that's my school email address underneath and my Twitter handle. If you would like any of the uh, documents that I have on here, practice plans in or out of season, or you would just like me to watch film on your kicker and have me critique it, I would absolutely love to do that. I'm here to help anybody I can make their kickers and punters better. Thank you.